Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the Phantom EX update. Actually, the Phantom in general. I've had it in the studio for about a year or so, and the EX update came out about a month ago, maybe two months ago. And this is the first time talking really about the Phantom on the channel. I like it a lot, so spoiler alert, I think it's a great keyboard. Uh, but I want to talk about some pros and cons. And it's going to fall into multiple camps here, from the piano side to the, the keyboard action and to the synthesizer side of things. So if you're curious about those kind of elements in a studio setting, then this could be a decent video for you. Uh, I'm not going to talk about live performance type of stuff with this because I have not used it live. And it's also a very heavy keyboard. This is specifically the Phantom 8. It's like 65 pounds and I don't have a team to haul it around <laughs> for live performance. So I would not prefer this in a live setting technically, even though it is a powerhouse and has wonderful action keys and all that. In fact, let's talk about that first. So probably the standout feature of the big version, you do have these really nice grand piano weighted keys. They're like wood. They feel really nice if you're used to playing a uh, acoustic piano. So I do have a lot of experience with an acoustic piano. Not that I'm trained or anything like that, but like I, I have a lot of experience playing grand pianos. I used to own an upright Baldwin grand piano that I do miss. That was a beautiful piano. Uh, but this action, feels fantastic and it has a lot of sensitivity as well I think the the velocity internally is a much higher resolution I could be wrong in that but I, I feel like I read somewhere where like the internal velocity for the actual keys is a lot higher like a thousand or something like that so you can do you can have nice very soft responses and then get pretty intense with it so the dynamics are great Speaking of dynamics, I am currently using one of the V pianos. The, the new V piano, actually, the German one, I believe. Yeah, it's the one that came with the Phantom EX update. So there's currently two V piano models in this box now, if you do own a, uh, a regular Phantom. I really like the V piano. I think it sounds great, and there's a lot of control internally with it. Here's the, the first preset German concert. Let's go to the other one, the stage grand for the original V piano. Immediate difference, different tone, texture, and all that. I like the bold beauty preset in here. It's a little more muted. So the V piano, very awesome, really enjoy this, and I like the addition of this new uh, German concert piano. Another subtle color palette type of thing. So first con that happens to be with this keyboard is that if you want to use any of these V pianos, you're relegated to only using the first channel. So channel one has a special chip inside that handles exclusively the V piano technology. Yeah, which is fine, right? I mean, you know, you don't really need multiple pianos in a jam template type of thing that you're making, unless you want to do specific effects. But even if you're doing like crunchy effects, like lo-fi, looping type of effects, you could probably just use a regular piano. In fact, let's hear that real quick while we're on the discussion. So here's a regular Zencore acoustic pop piano. Yeah, it's a piano, but it definitely is missing some of that texture, some of that resonance. Like when I hold down the pedal, it kind of just feels sterile. When I hold down the pedal of the German concert, suddenly there's a lot more life. And I didn't even talk about like the, the things that you can adjust here, like the lid, string resonance, all that stuff. It's all customizable. So clearly a lot more lively acoustic piano in there in comparison to the Zencore. 
which again, not bad. And in the context of a mix, sometimes you might not actually tell. But if you're playing something that's a lot more solo centric or a lot more uh, dynamics nuanced, you're gonna be able to tell. So VPNO is exclusive to channel one, which means you can only have one VPNO loaded. And again, which is fine if it's just pianos, but with the Phantom EX update came ACB technology. So to bring you up to speed real fast, Roland developed ACB technology a while ago. That is a really good model of their analog circuitry for synths like the Juno, Jupiter. So it's really good technology, it sounds great. But then they moved away from that technology and started adopting a more efficient technology. Arguably, it doesn't sound as good. Now, it doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound as good as the ACB technology. The problem is the ACB technology is a lot more uh, resource or processor intensive. So when the Phantom first came out, uh, none of that existed in the software. And then I think it was update 3.0. There was an update a couple years later that brought in uh, different synthesizer modules. So for instance, if I go to the model section and then you will see, I currently have a Jupiter. And I can switch between Jupiter, Juno, JX8P, SH101, Enzyme, which is new, or a, 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 an addition with the Phantom EX before it was a paid plugin, and the JD800. So let's go to the Jupiter. This is using the newer technology that's more efficient. The benefit here is that I can load up any of these synthesizer models, the model plugins, on any of the channels. So I can go all the way up to 16 channels and have these uh, synthesizer models loaded on there. So for instance, channel three, I can go over to the model and then I can say, bring up an SH-101. Change this to a bass. So we, we could have like a bass sound on channel three, this Berlin Nights on uh, channel two, and then our VPNO on channel one, if we're going for a multi timbral type of situation here. So long story short, ACB technology was an older technology that seemed like they were moving away from it and forgetting about it, and then suddenly this Phantom EX update, they brought the ACB technology into this board, but it uses the VPNO chip which means that of the current ACB models that are in here, you can only have one of them loaded at any given time in your board. I think that's unfortunate and it's a bit of a uh, gotcha. So I'm currently in channel one and if I go over to the options here, I have a option of ACB, load that up and then I can use either the Jupiter or the SH-101. I think it just has a, a richer synthesizer quality to it, personally. Again, this is one of these things where if it's soloed or more featured in the mix, you'll be able to tell. But if it's an element that's kind of mixed in the background or a more texture element that's just, you know, like I said, supporting the track in the background, you're not going to really be able to tell that much. And those other models that are uh, more efficient and can run on the other channels are definitely going to be fine for that situation. So maybe as a quick test, what we could do is initialize these tones here. So let's initialize this. Let's get rid of the reverb as well. It's automatically on here. So Jupiter 8, that is completely initialized. Now I'm gonna go over to the Jupiter 8 model version, not the ACB version, model version, the more efficient, less detailed and accurate version. I'm gonna initialize this tone as well. And get rid of the reverb. There we go. Let's go ACB. And model. Very similar, right? Really, really close. Here's where there can be some differences in chord structures. So if I hold a four note C minor chord. A lot of harmonic texture in there that's swirling and all that. Let's hear the model version.
Again, really close, but the difference is in the high-end harmonics. So in the in the model version, there's just just slightly less harmonics going on. Also, there's definitely less notes in the ACB version. Like, maybe it's actually eight notes, like the Jupiter. But, you know, like the, the model version, it's not limited to eight notes. So, definitely higher note count. Let's sweep the filter. So, let's bring it halfway down. And then do the same thing on here. Halfway in ACB on the filter knob is not the same as uh, the model version. Yeah, it's like the ACB is more uh, hi-fi, like there's there's a bit more low end and highs being brightened through it, and maybe the mids are slightly scooped, whereas the, the model version is definitely more mid-range focused. It's not necessarily a bad thing either way. It's just the, the biggest problem is that there's a limitation in that if you want to use these ACB versions, you can only use them on channel one, and you're also getting rid of that really nice piano. So no virtual piano if you want to use the ACB. Assuming a multi-timbral context though, because if you're using this as like a, a sound palette that you just record tracks directly to something like Ableton, then obviously that's not a problem because you'd record it, you're done, move on to the next sound, record that, so, you know. But if you are using this in terms of a multi-timbral context, then um, you start running into some issues right there. But anyways, finishing up the ACB discussion here, I think it's great that they did add that to it, even though it's a paid update, $200 update. And it is technically old technology <laughs> that they've had for years at this point. And now they're incorporating it into their flagship uh, synthesizer. So a little strange on there. So I would not be surprised if we see more ACB models and they're probably gonna be paid models uh, that they wanna charge for in this box. I don't know if I would actually spend any more money on the ACB models because again, there's a pretty big limitation in that you can only use it on channel one. And the other models already sound pretty good. The ACB definitely sounds better, but it's gonna have a lower voice count. And again, there's just those inherent limitations with it. There's also the fact that it's a pain in the ass to install any of this stuff. At least I think so anyways. The whole Phantom EX update took like 40 minutes or something and you had to juggle a bunch of stuff, get in the back and hold things and you know turn it on a certain way. And it's just not convenient for something that is being currently sold as a flagship synth in 2024. Maybe you disagree with me on this, and that's totally fine, but I think Roland could spend a bit more time on their user friendliness when it comes to their synthesizers. That being said, once you update it, you know, it's updated, it's fine. So you just have to get through the process of jumping through these hoops, swapping the USB drive multiple times, and waiting for it to finish after 40 minutes, and fingers crossed you didn't screw something up and brick your $4,000 keyboard. <laughs> with that said, I might as well talk about the user interface here. So one thing that I don't really like currently about the way this is set up or the way it feels is that I don't actually want to program sounds inside the Phantom keyboard. I like playing sounds on the Phantom keyboard and I like the controls that I have off to the side here for like the filter sweeps and all that. But when it comes to actually programming sounds, I find myself less interested than a regular synthesizer. And it's a shame because again, with the ACB models, like there is a lot of power in here, but I don't find myself wanting to touch the screen and do stuff with it as, uh, as much as say like an NPC. I think this is where the NPC really shines actually, is that the user interface of the NPC, even though it can be very complicated and convoluted at times, when it comes to the plugins, say like the Jura plugin or the Mini-D, I think they nailed it when it comes to the, the feel of adjusting sliders and adjusting things inside those synthesizers. Now the ACB models are a bit better and they do seem to try to uh, give you that experience, but for whatever reason, 
I don't find myself very excited to program these synths on this keyboard. And especially when it comes to any Zen core type of stuff. So it's ambient. So this is a Zen core patch called Ambient. And by the way, the Zen core stuff sounds really awesome. I know a lot of people get excited about like these old school, you know, like Juno, Jupiter stuff inside these keyboards. But for me personally, I think the Zen core is like, it's where it's at. You have much more interesting uh, synthesizer textures coming out of these type of patches, in my opinion, anyways. But if I look at the parameters on here, this is not anything that I want to actually program on this keyboard, unfortunately. I mean, it's basically menu diving at this point, uh, but there is some nice, you know, screens and menu type of options to get you closer to what you want to actually do. But the experience of it, I haven't found to be anything that I really like. Now that being said, that's a me problem. I could spend more time with this and I could get more used to actually programming the synthesizer architecture inside uh, the Zen Core machine and all that. I've used a lot of synthesizers at this point, both hardware and software, and I don't find myself liking this setup. And to be fair, the competition isn't much better. I tried the Modi X6 Plus, Modi X Plus 6, whatever it is, and that was just, I did not like that architecture. I like the sounds in it, although they sounded a bit more like stage poppy type of feel, but the actual programming of the, the synth inside of that, no, I wasn't feeling that. <laughs> so it's not like anyone's got this market covered in terms of flexibility, although I haven't tried Korg, maybe Korg's better, but the MPC side of things, even though the MPC side could mature a bit more in terms of what it offers for synthesizer architectures, uh, it is pretty great in terms of a user-friendly, like get your hands on and feel like you're moving stuff and uh, not getting lost in the weeds. Cause I feel like you just get lost in this so easily. I'm like, oh my God, it's page after page of, you know, I mean, it's a complex synth. So it's like on one end, how do you show all that complexity? You know, I'm just being honest here. Now, if we like ignore the screen side of things right here, uh, the controls over here are decent. And I do really like this filter knob. I like the fact that it is high resolution. It's over a thousand steps to be able to sweep the, the filter and it does feel really smooth. This is all Zencore. See, these patches sound fantastic. This is why I just, I really like what is going on with the, the core engine that comes with the, the Phantom. Another nitpick is the way effects and routing are. Like for instance, if I want to adjust the, the reverb in here, it's extremely convoluted. At least I think it is anyways. Again, this is one of these things where if, if you learn it and you know it, then it's like, well, it's not, you just go to this thing, you're done. But <laughs> to, to someone just getting this, they'd probably be like, how do I adjust the freaking reverb? You go menu, you go effects edit, which makes sense, right? But then you're presented with this screen that looks like a schematic of how uh, you're going to build something. And it's a routing schematic, obviously. So this is how the, the audio routing is happening on here. In order to edit the reverb, you click on the edit button and then it shows you the chorus and the reverb. So I'm still not 100% editing the reverb yet. If I touch this, then I can change the reverb. Oh, and one of the new ones, like Shimmer and Modulation. These, these are good reverbs, by the way. Go to Modulation, and then if I hit Edit, now I'm editing the reverb. So there's a few pages to edit the one single reverb that's available amongst all the sounds. So keep that in mind here. Uh, let's turn the rate of the modulation way down. Let's turn the modulation up, and let's crank the time. So I just edited this Modulation Reverb. I'm gonna go back. Actually, I have to go back to zone view if I want to do that. So I have this slow attack. If I want to hear this reverb, crank it up. So 
So I'd mentioned one single reverb for all your instruments here. And this is a uh, this is one of my gripes with this. Powerful box, but there's only a single reverb. And that reverb is, uh, you know, can obviously be a lot of different types, but in my opinion, it's a bit of a problem if you're gonna have something that's like a, a studio production, multi-timbral sequencer type of thing, but then only have one reverb, like, uh, I think two or three is kind of the minimum if you're gonna have different instruments in here. Finally, we should probably talk about the sequencer. And there's a lot of shortcomings when it comes to the sequencer in this box. It's unfortunate really, because I actually, I like what they got going on here. You hit record, you can say, you know, if you want your quantization, let's say grid. I'm actually going to quantize it to the eighth note. I'll keep some of that strength going there. So that's cool. You got like a Ableton Live clip launching type of thing going on right there. The problem that I have with this guy is that it has very limited uh, automation recording type of stuff. For instance, if I were to record, let's actually go. Let's say I wanted to record this filter. Can't do it. So I'll show you. Uh, we'll keep it with this. Count in, sure, yeah. No filter. Didn't record it. Now it will record the, the modulation wheel. It will record that, it will record your pitch bend. I do believe you can edit some modulation stuff afterwards, but you have to paint it in, draw it in. Like I would rather perform it or record it like that. But you have this really nice filter knob right here and you can't record any of that in the sequencer info information. Weird. Also, it took an update, but the maximum length went from 32 all the way up to 64. Be nice to be able to go up to 128 or unlimited, but uh, that's not the case. So if you do want to record really long, like say piano improvisations, you're not gonna be able to do it. Again, such a really nice keyboard, really nice piano sounds, and you can't record like 10 minutes of piano improvisation. Roland, why would you do that? You got this sequencer right here, you got the options, why not give us unlimited measures? Also going into each measure and editing things, it's a pain in the ass. If you're used to a DAW, you know, the DAW is gonna be way better. If you're used to an MPC, I mean, that thing crushes the sequencer. It just does. There's so much more options and uh, capabilities in the MPC sequencer. Speaking of, I think I'll round out this conversation with a subtle comparison to the MPC because uh, I know a lot of people might compare this to say the Key 61. And uh, rightfully so, you know, that's technically a, a hardware workstation, and this is in that workstation class, even though it's not considered a workstation, Roland has very specifically said this is a synthesizer, for whatever that's worth. Workstation to workstation, you know, type of comparisons. This is going to be technically better in a live scenario if you're a keyboardist, essentially. And the reason is, the sounds all load up immediately. When it comes to the NPC side of things, you have to actually load things. It takes time. Like if you load up the strings inside the NPC, there's like 15 seconds or so. Like if I go to channel six here and I say strings, brass, wind, bass, uh, guitar, Choir. It's instant, you know? 
that's one of the benefits of these type of keyboards is like they, the sounds just load up immediately. There is no waiting for it. So that's something that you're just not going to see on the MPC. The MPC also is limited to eight plugins in the hardware version. You have virtually unlimited sampling when it comes to the MPC. I mean, the, the memory hits a limit, but it's a sampler that can handle a ton of information. But when it comes to actual plugins that would generate sound like your synthesizers, you can only have eight of those total. Eight's a lot though, so don't get me wrong. But if you were to load up eight different plugins per song in a live scenario, then you're gonna have some downtime right there. It's gonna take a little bit of time for it to load up. And also the NPC tends to be more buggier in general. And not to say that the Phantom is bug free either. There's definitely bugs inside of this because it's a massive software package built into a piece of hardware. And they're not perfect by any means. So yeah, with the MPC workstation versus Roland Phantom workstation type of comparison, the difference really comes down to live scenarios. But if it's for a studio production environment, I think the MPC would probably win out slightly. In terms of the, uh, the sequencer, it's gonna crush it. But in terms of sounds, you know, the Phantom has a ton of sounds and they're fantastic. But also the MPC platform itself has been maturing steadily with each year and getting steady updates, whereas the Phantom, the Phantom EX might be the last update, possibly. I need to wrap up this video before it gets too long. Hopefully you found this information useful. Like I said, I'm just giving my honest feedback and user experience after using this guy for about a year inside a studio setting. If you're a Phantom user, definitely drop your comments below. would love to hear your perspectives. If you are planning on picking up a Phantom or any gear for that matter, if you use our affiliate links below, it helps out the channel. We get a cut at no additional charge to you, so directly supports us. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you making it to the end as well, and I'll see you next time for another one. Peace.